The following production is brought to you by the Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Don't you love putting out an episode all about adding a guy and saying it might not matter and then it just going down the toilet? Not not 48 hours ago, we sat here and we said, you know, the saga of Kyle Dubas and the theater of Kyle Dubas down the stretch here is going to be fascinating because what he ends up doing is going to dictate how he feels about his job and how desperate he is to get this done and... This guy just goes out and pulls off one of the biggest leap. Is this the biggest trade they've made in a in a decade? Like, when's the last time they made a trade that was like bringing in two like big name players? Like, yeah, I don't know. A I, long time. I mean, they've they've made deadline deals, but looking back on it, it it's not as um, it doesn't seem as impactful as this as this one. Let's get the uh, the technicalities out of the way first. If you've been living under a rock, then you don't know that the Toronto Maple Leafs have acquired Ryan O'Reilly and Noel Achari from the St. Louis Blues. This is a three-way trade between the Blues, the Leafs, and the Wild. Um, the Leafs give up some draft capital here. They give up a first-round pick, Ottawa's third-round pick in 2023, and Toronto's second-round pick in 2024. So... Right off the bat, give me your thoughts. Like when you saw this come down, what was the first thing you thought? That Kyle Dubas, every single year for this team at the trade deadline, has tried to add a certain type of player that the older folk Leaf fans kind of see as a missing piece for them to do something. So they go out and get all these captains from all these different teams. Nick Felino was a captain. They got him, didn't work out. Mark Giordano was a captain, worked out, but wasn't enough. And then they go out and they do it again. He goes and adds a quote-unquote playoff-style hockey player, a Con Smythe winning player who was an absolute stud winning a Stanley Cup in 2019. So obviously, right off the bat, that gets me excited. They, um, he also doesn't wear a visor. Yeah, it's goat. Yeah, that, that is pretty goat. So we should also mention that St. Louis will retain 50% of O'Reilly's salary and Minnesota is picking up the tab for 25% of O'Reilly's salary. So, and also getting a fourth round pick from the Leafs as yes, well. Ryan O'Reilly's cap hit with the Leafs is 1.875 million. That's, that's pretty great work. It's pretty great work. And you bring in another guy like Noel Achari, literally been sitting here for months being like, they do not have enough depth up front. They do not have enough depth up front. They The the bottom six is no good. It has no identity. And this just takes everybody. Like, I don't need to look at Alex Kerfoot in a prominent role anymore. And I don't want to sit here and be negative and dump on Alex Kerfoot. But to me, this is like, I'm... I'm over the moon about it. I don't know how y- anyone can look at this. They didn't give up Nyes. Sure, they gave up draft picks, okay? Yes, and I know there's a lot of people being like, they gave up, that seems like a lot of draft capital to give up. And it's like, they're in win-now mode, man. Like, what do you what do you want? It's like, well, well what if, what if this, so you're going to mortgage the future and only get two rounds? Yes, <laughs> yes. That's where we're at with this organization. They need to win a round. Period. Like, yes, the ultimate goal is the Stanley Cup, and they're not going to come out publicly and say, you know, if we get to the East final, we'll consider that, like, a win. They're, but that is the reality of the situation here. So forget about it. Also, this management has shown that they can find guys in the late rounds. Kyle Dubas spends every draft trading down, trading down, trading down. He's going to acquire some more picks in the draft this year. Him and his team will go to work, and they'll go and get some more prospect capital. I just don't understand. What do you people want? Like, what do you want? 
Like you want you want this team to win, you want them to do well, but you're gonna get on and bitch and complain about trading draft picks in a when you've got two years left of Austin Matthews. Like what are you talking about? Like let's just live in the meager middle forever. Let's just do that. I can't I can't believe it. And then all these hockey guys on Twitter who are all like, well, this isn't what Kyle Dubas said. It's like, shut up, man. You're just so butthurt and upset that you had you didn't get a sniff of this. The team's PR was the one who broke this trade. None of the quote-unquote insiders who are supposed to be plugged in. Get out of here. Yeah, there, there, is, there is a lot of ways. It's hilarious when something like this goes down, and I'm not a big leave Twitter guy, but I have an Eggman account for these types of days and you and you go on and it's hilarious just seeing all the different reactions and trying to figure out which reaction is too much or makes sense or is stupid or is smart and to me it all boils down to one thing and one thing only yes if this trade doesn't work out and they lose in the first round that is not good just like how it, how it's been the past couple of seasons but And people are saying it's cup or bust now, but make no mistake about it. This is about one thing and one thing only. Winning a round. Yes. That is it. Yeah. That is all this is about. It's about nothing and else. Anything beyond the first round win is gravy. Anything Literally, else. Yeah. It sounds, maybe that is not the right mentality. I get it. If this team with all the talent they have and all the, in the trade they just made, they should be a Stanley Cup contender. And you know what? Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't. But this is about one thing and one thing only. It's about winning a round and taking the biggest weight off a pro sports franchise's shoulders. This is all it's about. Yes. That's it. Yes. And you and I sat here, like I said, under 48 hours ago, and you went through all four forward lines of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And we said, who do the Leafs have in the bottom six that's a depth piece, that's an established guy, that's a player? And at the time, it was like, no one. And who who can they stack up against this bottom whole, six? The theme group? of last episode for me was all about they have no characters. I said that about a thousand times. They just went and added two. Yes. So I just, like, this team is in win-now mode. I can't say that enough. I I, I just, I can't. Stop worrying about the draft picks. Like, you're in a situation where you have to have success this year, and you and I are the only people who I see that'll come on here and be realistic about what that success is, and that success is winning a single playoff round. That's it. That's it. That's it. And anything else beyond that is gravy. And so, like you said, you go and get two character guys who've been there before, who play hard, who aren't going to be intimidated by the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are going to take some of the weight off these young kids because – We've talked about getting the weight off their shoulders and how these guys feel. I'm talking about the core four, how these guys feel when they get into the first round. And it's just breaking through that glass ceiling and in the back of their mind, what if we lose? What if we lose? Now you got a guy like Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari coming in here and they're just like, let's just go out there and play, man. Let's just go out there and play. Pushes everybody down. That's what I'm so excited about. I've sat here, Ryan, since November and I've rant and raved to you about this bottom six sucks. And it does. It sucks. And now we're just taking everybody and we're shoving them down a notch. We're shoving them down a peg. And Kyle, my dude. And listen, it might not work out. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. You're playing Andre Vasilevsky in the first round. It might not work out. But you know what? The guy showed that he's got some cojones and he's taking a swing and he's saying. I'm putting my chips in the middle. We're going to try and get this thing done. Yes, Kyle. Ryan, yes, Kyle. Ryan O'Reilly was the savage who took down the Boston Bruins in game seven of the 2019 Stanley Cup final. Like, this is the play. Like, I, it's just, if you're looking at an identity player of what this team needs, that everyone explains every single day, every single day. It's, it's this guy. It literally is. I know he's not having a great year. I know the Blues suck. I know he's... Minus 24. I know that. That's great. But guess what? Anyone who's played sports knows playing for a shit team sucks. And it affects you. It really does. And the, I get it. They gave up a lot of draft picks. And a lot. And the situation they're in right now is because, of, because they've traded away draft picks. And they haven't drafted that well. But at the same time, if to me, if 34 walks 
This team is screwed anyways. Yeah. Like, they're done. Yep. You have to do everything you can to win a round yeah. and, and just inject some adrenaline I know. into this roster. Yep. yep. And so, like, what is Kyle supposed to do, really? Like, what is he supposed to do? Yep. He had to go out and trade draft picks to get the guy that everyone explains every single day and that they need. And if you're going to bring in two impact guys, they've said all along they didn't want to trade Nice. They didn't trade Nice. If you're going to bring in two impact guys, you got to give something up. And I'm sorry. Like, it, it, it is what it is. It's it, like, and I saw someone, I saw some guy write an article and I was reading it and he goes, well, they're not really leaving themselves in the best situation if Matthews and Nylander walk. And it's like, who? Then, they're, then they're it's screwed. over anyway. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're done. They're screwed anyway. We're back into the dark ages. Yes. Yes, it, it does. It doesn't matter. Yes. It really doesn't matter. You have matter. a way better chance of re-signing Austin Matthews if you can have some playoff success yes. this year. Like, you have a way better chance of re-signing the guy. Like, that's... You don't think Kyle took that into consideration as well? You don't think he's sitting there going like, hey... If we shit the bed in the first round again, we might lose our franchise player. Let's go all in. Let's bring in an absolute beauty of the likes of, of Ryan O'Reilly and Noah Chari too. Like, these are two character guys. And that's the thing. Anyone who complains about, like, how soft this team is, shut up. I don't want to hear it anymore. You just brought in two, like, legit established Playoff performers, character guys. Yeah. I, I just think people, th don't get me wrong. There's the people who get way too excited. There's just like that crazy Lee fan who's just way too excited. But then there's also just a, a group of bitter old dinos who are just waiting for this to fail to, to just laugh at everybody who got excited about this. But, I, at the, but if you look at it just logistically and take all emotion out of it, what what is the problem with this hockey team? It's they don't it, what we said last episode. They don't have enough character. They don't have enough guy, a, a type of guy who can go into the playoffs and make a difference. And Kyle literally just went out and got a guy who won a Conn Smythe Trophy. It, he got the guy that everybody explains every single day, the type of player that they need, and and it's not good enough for some people. Ridiculous. And it's just like it, it, they're just throw. They got to throw something at the wall that's, here, Ryan. That's that's where I'm coming from here. Like, I'm I'm screaming from the rooftops here, and the reason why I'm screaming from the rooftops here is because the guy is taking a swing. He's going for it. He's saying, you know what? The situation is what it is right now. My job is on the line. Austin Matthews is up in two years. We got to get this done. And again, say all you want, and you get, you'll get you probably get a ton of people in the comments on this video who are being like, pretty sad that the standard is only winning around, but it's like, that's just the reality. No, that, that's of the what situation. it is. I'm sorry. Yes. Don't tell me if you're a Leaf fan, if they don't win around, you're not going to be out of your mind. Yes. Just be honest with yourself. Yes. That's what it, it, the weight, it's the weight. There, there's a million pounds on every Leaf fans shoulders right now. And whether they want to recognize it or not, it's all about winning a round. And that's you, all it is. You factor in this team's history in the playoffs you factor in who they're playing again in the first round. But that first round pick doesn't help you right now, people. It's about right now. That's what blows my mind. It's like, oh, well, they, they've really sacrificed their future. It's like, it, what are you talking about? So we're not going to go and make an impactful trade because we're worried about what the team's going to look like three, four years from now? Let's just, you know what? Let's just, let's just come in third in the division and lose in the first round forever then, if that's what's going to make you happy. I do have to say, I will say that 48 hours ago, you asked me if getting one player would make the difference for this team, and I said no. Well, they didn't get one. They got two. And that, you know what? It, now, now I sound like a bit of an idiot for saying that, but... No, they, no you didn't, because they, they didn't get one. They got two. Dude, but to, to be Noah honest... Noah is, is is an really under... Like, everyone's focused on Ryan O'Reilly, obviously, because he's a big name, captain of the St. Louis Blues. Bringing in Noel Achari, Alex Kerfoot. Why don't you drop David Camp? Why don't you play the fourth line center role where where you should be playing instead of the third? Because love David Camp, he's a great hockey player. Guy can't put the puck in the ocean. So like, 
why don't you go down to the fourth line and center the fourth line and play your shutdown role? Pontus, huge bright side. Love having Pontus in the organization. Not ready right now, and not the guy you want in every night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So bring in Nolachari, just shoves everyone down a rung on the ladder. Yeah, I, I just think, I first, number one, I'll say that I thought the O'Reilly thing was dead. I, I've always liked that thought because, again, he's the type of player that we talk about every single day. So, to me, adding a player like that gets me excited. And number two, I don't know if it's going to be enough. I don't know if it's going to be enough. It, that's not what this is about, really. This is about a general manager who just has to make tough decisions to try to get this team yes. over the hump. Yes. And and, his, and you can't blame him for doing this. No. Like, you can't. Like, no. he just, he, ha, he had, to, what was he going to do? Yeah, exactly. So, you're Sheldon Keefe. Where are you putting Ryan O'Reilly and Nolachari? I, I don't, Nolachari can fit in anywhere on those bottom two lines. I, I He's probably going to slot in in a wing position. I know he's played some centers, but whatever. He'll, he'll slide in on the third or fourth line, whatever it works. Ryan O'Reilly playing on the third line gives them just the ultimate center depth. And I think he could be a rover between the third line center and that maybe he could fill in on the left wing position when they really need a goal. And also, he could replace Mike Bunning on the power play when it comes to being that low player as well. Because he's someone who can score below the hash mark. But I, I just... I, I I could really see the only problem with him playing third line center is who's who's his winger like it, like at the end of the day he hasn't scored in St Louis because he hasn't had much help and whatever and you, but you're gonna stick him there with Engvall well, do, do you just go for broke and just throw him on the left wing yeah, right like, away to me that's like the see, exciting see how thing. it goes yeah, yeah like to me I think listen you got um Elliot Friedman tweeted that they they could be in the lineup Saturday night against Montreal so and then. Sunday night against Chicago. So these are two these are two pretty bad hockey teams. So let's let's throw them on the left wing with Marner and Tavares and see how it looks. And well, let's let's have Achari center the third line and let's have uh Camp center the fourth line. Yeah, I think uh I don't know if Achari's going to be centering any line to be honest with you. Okay, I can see put him put, yeah. putting in a in a he could, I could see him taking some face-offs. You but. put them on the same line then. I don't know. I, I think with O'Reilly, it, it's with O'Reilly. It's like put him in, put him in that left wing spot because that's what they really need. That's exciting. But also, if you throw him on the third line and he's your third line center, then that just makes your team all around better. It's the classic argument of do you want to spread out your talent or have it all bunched up into two lines. To me, he starts out on the third line as a center because he is a centerman and he's someone who has won a selkie before. Like this, it's not like he's the makeshift center. This guy is a is a, is a dominant defensive center when he's at his best. So I think you just slot him in. If anything, Tavares should move to the wing. Yeah. If anything, John Tavares should move to the wing and Ryan O'Reilly should play center. Yeah. Like, that, that's the way I would look at it. Yeah. Because this guy's won a Selkie before. Like, this guy's legit. And let John Tavares focus on skating up and down his wing. And that's that's what I keep talking about, man. Like, that's that's why it's so... And I know people get so hung up on on rentals. And I get it, because you, you pay a price and there's no guarantee they're going to be here. But it's just the reality of the situation that this team is in. Like, full stop. And I just, I can't with people who are like, oh, they mortgaged the future. It's like, what? What are you talking about? Like, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about where, where they'll be three years from now. I'm worried about, because you're right. If Austin Matthews walks, it's over. Yeah, it's over it's anyways. Over. It's, it's done. over. It's done. So, yes. They're, they're irrelevant again. Yes. So, like, who cares? It's about winning around this year. And anything else is gravy. And you have to go into it with the mentality of, hey, if we can get by the first round, maybe that's the key that unlocks the door and we can go on a run here. And then, yeah. and then the monkey's off the back. That, and that's all it is. Win. Yes. That's literally all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. Like it's it sucks. I know it's not a good mentality, but that's what it is. It is what it is. It's the it, reality it's like, of the situation. It literally, that glove up there with the infinity stones yeah. that gets snapped yeah. if they went around. Yes, literally, yes. that's it, and everything gets reset. Yes, that's it. Yes, and and people have have reported that the city's gonna lose its mind. Yes, if they went around, there'll be there'll be riots in the streets. That's pathetic. It's pathetic, <laughs> but guess what? That's what it is. Yes, I'm sorry. Is. Yes, that's the situation they're in. That's. They have to win a round. Yes. That's, that's what this deal is, to win a round. 
Do you think he's done? I could see him. No, no, I don't think he's done either. I could see him making another move, like getting somebody out the door, maybe bringing some picks back in just to sort of like, like I just look at a guy like Alex Kerfoot and I'm like, where do you fit in in all of this? I guess as a winger on the, in the bottom six. I don't I, we, I think me and you have a more, like, we just don't like watching Alex Kerfoot. Like, yeah. I don't have an objective opinion on Alex Kerfoot. Like, I, I just, I've seen him play hockey too much. I, I, is he an awful player? No. But what do you, do I like watching him play hockey? No. Like, it just, I don't like Alex Kerfoot because I've watched Alex Kerfoot play hockey and I just think he's, I just don't like him. But I, I'm sure someone who's more objective about the game looks at him and goes, well, he's actually a useful player. He could slide up and down your lineup, whatever. But I, to me, like, I, I'm done watching him. I'm done watching a couple of guys on this team, to be honest. So I, I don't know. For me, what's interesting is we sat here, like I said, two days ago, and, and I really I really went after the bottom six and went after, like, a guy like Engvall. And it's kind of like, what does playing with a, a, a higher-end player like an O'Reilly potentially do for his game? I don't know. Like, like I, I don't know. If you inject, if you inject, like more skill and a better hockey player into the bottom six, a rising tide lifts all boats. So that's that's kind of what you're hoping for here. Well, this is this is really gonna put our theory to the test of once you don the sweater, what happens to you as a hockey player? I don't think anything is gonna happen to Ryan O'Reilly because you're bringing in two hard nosed dudes. Two guys that we are, were literally describing 48 hours ago. Characters. Yes. And we're going to put it to the test. When you put on this uniform, does are they going to just, like, is somebody going to take over their bodies yes. and just make them into useless hockey players? Oh, my God. Because that, that's what we were talking about 48 hours ago. No matter who comes here, no matter how good they are, they, they always just kind of fall in line to being leafy. And is that going to happen with these two guys? I, if they do, then we all look like idiots. I don't but. think so. Like, I, I just don't see that happening to, to these two guys. I think they've been in the league too long. They're character guys. Like, there's rumors that earlier in the year that O'Reilly was banged up. So we'll wait and see, like, what exactly that means. Well, if I find it interesting that he just came back from an injury and he's played three, four games and then the trigger's pulled. Yeah. So there was the rumblings about the Leafs being interested in O'Reilly, like, what is that, a month, month or two ago? And then he leaves, he gets injured, and it's interesting how he comes back. He's played three or four games, and from what I've read, he's played pretty well. And then, that, to me, that was enough for Kyle to, to pull the trigger. Well, this saddle up, partner. It's We're, exciting. I'm it, sorry. Exciting. I don't care what anybody yeah, says. says. You know, know what? If, know. If, if they go out in the first round again... And we're, you know what? We're, we're just back to where we were yeah, anyway. Exactly. So like, you exactly. know, like, it's just like, exactly. It's gonna, it already sucks. So, yeah. like, you might as well just throw some push your shit chips, at the yeah, wall. Push your chips into the middle. Like, we're not, we're not, it's not like we're losing. Like, we're just, we're losers anyway. Yes. That's what I said. I will, I will commend Kyle Dubas for having the balls to pull the trigger on this deal and to just be like, we got to get, we got to get this done this year. And, by God, we're gonna we're gonna do everything we can to make that happen. I have to get this done yes. this year. Yes. That's the what he should be thinking. Not we, I. Because I won't be around when these picks are are being drafted by other teams that I traded away. Like I I he needs this more than anybody. One hundred percent. And all yeah. Right, all right, buddy. We're gonna be back early next week because we're gonna get a look at these two new guys and where they are in the lineup, and we want to hop back on and discuss that as well. And I also, to your point, don't think Kyle Dubas is done. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that as well. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button below. Leave a comment. Tons of comments on our last episode. We absolutely love it. Here we go, buddy. Here we go. Let's go. Thanks so much for checking us out. Once again, if you like what you see, hit that like and subscribe button below. Spread the word. Tell all your friends. Tell all your family that Kyle Dubas just traded for Ryan O'Reilly. And if you want to cry about draft capital, go somewhere else and cry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time.